purpose of this video is to show you just how awesome Photoshop can be. So we're going to do a project together that you will follow along and this won't count as one of the three main projects for the course, so I'm calling it Project Zero. Now you can download the folder for Project Zero, which is attached to this video. When you download the folder, it'll look like this. It's a zipped file, so you have to right click and then choose Extract All. And then you can open up Project Zero. Now in this folder, I've included a reference image for you to see what we're going to be creating. So I went out and took these pictures. So we have a few different main elements here that we're going to compose within Photoshop. We have the hill here. We have the sky, which is most of the background. Then we have this girl. And then we have the balloons and the strings going along with them. So within the images folder here, we have our balloons, we have the girl, we have some texture overlays that we'll add at the end to make it look a little more vintage and cool. And then we have our background panorama images in this separate folder. Now this is just eight images and what I did is I took a picture with my camera and then I moved my tripod a little bit and I took another picture and then another picture and then another picture. And then I moved my camera upward and did the same thing. So there's a bottom row of images and there's a top row of images. And I'm going to show you how you can take these into Photoshop and have Photoshop merge them all together as one seamless panorama. So let's go ahead and do that first. First thing I want you to do is under Project Zero, there's a um, document here called Project Zero Photoshop document. Now Project Zero Gibson's edit is a folder that you can follow along with um, or rather you can refer back to, um, to see exactly what I did and what I'm about to do now as we do this together. So that's just my edit. Um, so if you open it up, it'll be a finished project altogether. Um, if you open up Project Zero by double clicking on it, it'll open up Photoshop. And this document is completely blank. There's nothing in it, but it's sized to the right dimensions for this project. So with this blank document open, choose File, Automate, Photo Merge. This is how we're going to create that panorama with those background images. Now make sure your settings look like mine. Layout is set to Auto, Source Files is set to Use Files, and then down here we'll select Blend Images Together and Vignette Removal. Here click Browse to select the images, navigate to that download folder, and go to the BG Pano folder, select all eight images, and open them up. Depending on what computer you have, this may take a bit of time for Photoshop to analyze the images and then blend them together for you, but it saves you a lot of time in the long run because you don't have to go through and do it yourself. And now our merged image looks something like this. And if you scroll here, you can zoom in to see that Photoshop has seamlessly blended those eight images together to create one panorama image. Now don't worry about the edges here. Um, where there's transparent areas, we're just going to use the middle area of this image. So what I want you to do is under here where it says layers, open that up. If you don't see that, you can click on window layers. And it will have all eight layers selected because we just merged them together. All you have to do here is right click on any one of the layers and choose merge layers. If they aren't all selected, make sure you have all eight layers selected by going if so if one's selected, you could see it here highlighted. And then if you hold down shift and scroll to the bottom, you can select every single image in there. Right click, merge layers. Now with your move tool selected here, click on this layer and drag it to our working document. Click OK. And there we go. Now we can exit out of this document because we don't need it anymore. Now what we're going to do is use two different elements within this layer to create the background. So we have the sky that needs to fill most of the frame, and then we have the hill that we're going to add a little curve to. So to separate these, let's create a copy of this layer by right-clicking on the layer over here and choosing Duplicate Layer. Now we have two versions of the same layer. If you can turn them on and off here, you can see that they're the exact same thing. So let's turn the top one off, 
and work with this lower layer here. And we are going to stretch this layer so that the blue sky is filling the entire frame. We can do that by clicking Control T. If you're on a map, you'll click Command T. Then here with the transform box, so Control T takes you to transform. Um, with the transform box, just click up and click and drag down so that the blue fills the whole sky. And there we go. Remember, you can zoom in and out, or you can use the magnifying glass zoom tool to zoom in and out. Accept that by clicking the check mark. Now you see here that there was some dirt on the sensor. And just to make sure nothing's pixelated because we stretched it so much, we'll go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. We'll do a blur close to 100. I'll just blur everything really evenly so we don't see any of those little defects. So now turn on the hill layer beneath, and we're going to, again, transform this, but we're going to do a warp. So I'll show you exactly what to do. With this top layer selected, click Control T or Command T, and go up here and choose this little icon. That'll take us to our warp dialog, where we can then choose warp, arc. And there we go. Now we can drag this downward, replace that little hill however we want it. You can change the amount that is arched here. Um, so I'll just bring it down, something like that, and click OK. And now we have a really cool little hill here and sky in the background. But you can see here that the sky from the hill layer is still showing through, and there's a really harsh transition between where this layer ends and where we see through to the layer beneath. All we have to do to fix that is go to the eraser tool and choose an eraser about 2,000 pixels in size and a hardness of zero. And then with the top hill layer selected, go to that border and just drag your mouse across that. So click and drag, and then go down here a little bit to add a really smooth transition. So we just erased part of that image. Now if I turn off this bottom layer, you can see what we did. We erased part of that image to see through to just the sky layer beneath. Great, so go back to your move tool so you're not having the eraser selected anymore. And now we're going to place the girl within the frame. So what we need to do is go to File, Place Embedded, go to our images and choose Girl, and click Place. Now we need to scale this down. So remember when we click Control T, we got that transform box that we could then click up and down and transform. But what if I wanted to transform it evenly so I didn't uh, change the dimensions of the image? To do that, I can hold down Shift and then click and drag on one of the corners to scale downward. And you can see that it'll scale evenly when I do that. So now I'll just place her how I want her to be within the frame. That is good. So I'll click check to accept that. You know what, I want her a little bigger. So I'll go control T and then hold shift as I drag outward to scale up. Perfect. Now we have the girl placed here in the image. If you don't see her, the layer for girl might be beneath one of these other layers. So make sure that you drag the girl layer to the very top because that's what will be visible. Now let's go File, Place Embedded, and let's choose the balloons. So we'll go Balloon Pink. We'll place this here, so Shift and Scale Downward. Okay, we'll place it something like that. So make sure that the balloon has enough space above the girl, and then that the string meets right here in between her index and thumb, her index finger and thumb, and leave a little bit of string uh, that goes past that. Because what we'll do is we'll use a tool to warp this string to make it come out here and look like she's holding it, and it's flowing out after um, her fist. So accept that to place the balloon, and then we'll place the other balloons. File, place embedded, We'll go with balloon orange. 
We'll scale this down to roughly the same size and then scale it down a tiny bit more because the orange balloon is supposed to be behind the pink balloon. Move it to the side a little bit and then with this transform box, you can move your cursor to the side and you'll get this little cool curved double arrow. That allows you to rotate. So you can rotate that layer a little bit and then bring it in a little bit and that looks good. Now don't worry too much about the string placement for this one. And then file, place embedded, balloon yellow. I'll just do the same thing. Shift and drag to scale down. Rotate it a little bit. And there we go, place it right there. Scale it down a tiny bit more. Okay, now we have our three balloons. They're not in the right order. Remember that the layers will show whatever is on top first. So we'll just drag balloon pink to the top of all of our layers, and now it looks more realistic. Now remember, I wanted to warp these strings on the balloons, so I'll show you how to do that right now. With balloon pink selected, go to Edit, Puppet Warp. And this will load a mesh onto the layer that we can then add points to and then warp however we want. So I'll add a point up here with the balloon, add some points on the string, and then right here where it meets her hand, we'll add, we'll add a point there, and then we'll add a point out here. And look what happens when I drag this point outward now. It bends everything. So I'll show you that again zoomed out so you can see a little better. It moves the mesh together as if it was one you know, object, which is the great thing about this tool. So now to compensate for that, I'll move this a little bit inward, move this down a little bit. Good, because we really want it to look like the balloons are holding her weight, right? So we don't want the string up here to be too wavy. But then down here, because it's not holding any weight anymore, we can bring it out here, add some curve to it, have it be a little bit more free-flowing. Okay, just like that. Click OK, and there we go. Now let's do the same thing for our other balloons. So we'll go to Balloon Yellow, Edit, Puppet Warp, add some points along here on the string. Now, I really want to make sure the string goes in here, so make sure to move that. There we go. Now, here, we'll move this outward. And we'll add some points here. Have a wave in a way that kind of complements the rest of the image. Good, like that. And now we'll do the same thing for the orange balloon. Go to balloon orange, edit puppet warp, load those points onto the balloon. Make sure we place the string to hit the hand at the right spot. Then drag it outward here. Set that, and there we go. Now we have the strings coming out of her hand, and they all meet up here, so it looks like she's really holding those balloons. Now let's drag the girl layer on top of everything else so the strings look like they're going behind her hand. There we go. And now we're set. So now we've placed all of the elements that we need to within the image. I do want to scale down the girl a little bit. I think I made her too big. Um, so I'll click the girl layer, Control T, 
hold down shift to scale down a little bit. I want to make sure I drag her back to the right point so it looks like she's holding those balloons. Good. And now with the girl selected, I'll go down with and select all the balloons too. So hold shift and now I've selected all of these layers. I'll drag this down a little bit. I think she's a little bit too high in the sky. There. That looks awesome. Okay, now what we're going to do is add some adjustment layers on top of everything to um, make some changes to the image as a whole. So what we're going to do is go to Adjustments here, or if you don't see that, go to Window, Adjustments, and click right here. We're going to add a curve to everything. So with the girl layer selected, remember a new layer will add on top of whatever layer is selected. So with the girl layer selected, choose Curves. I just want to pause real quick and remind you that we are going to go over everything that's covered in this video again in more detail. So right now, just follow along with me. You don't have to know what everything means and what everything is doing. So we're going to add a curve here. If you click on this little line, you can add a point to your curve and then you can drag those points to adjust the tone of your image. So I'll bring See, if you drag here, you can bring up the shadows. So we'll bring up the shadows just a little bit, bring down the midtones a little bit, and then bring up the highlights a little bit. Just like that. Now we'll add another adjustment. I want to affect the hue right now. So we'll click on Hue Saturation here. We'll bring the saturation down a little bit to negative 10. And then we'll change the hue a little bit as well, maybe negative 8. Perfect. And now I want to bring up the vibrance of the whole image. Bring down the saturation. I can turn off this adjustment layer. It really affected the balloons. Now they look more, they look less plastic to me, um, which I know doesn't make sense, but I feel like it works for the image. So to compensate for that, let's bring the vibrance up. So right here is the vibrance adjustment. Click that and then bring the vibrance up. Um, between 40 and 50 is good for that. Great. And now I think I did a little too much with the curve. So I can go to the curves adjustment layer here. And when you click on it, it'll select this little white square. Make sure that the curve icon is selected here. Go to opacity here. And bring that down. We'll bring that down to like 50. Perfect. Now it just affects it half as much. And now we're going to add a cool touch to the image, which involves texture overlays. So these are just pictures that I took on my own of concrete floors and a cork board. It's really simple. And then I turn them black and white on my computer and we're going to bring those in now. So click place embedded, go to texture A. It's already the right size for the document. So just accept it here. Make sure it's above everything else. With texture A selected, Go to where it says normal here and choose soft light. Now you can see on the image that it's added this cool texture on top of everything. It's a bit too much, so let's bring the opacity of that down. Opacity just means visibility or how see-through something is. So bring it way down to like, usually between 5 and 15 or 20 is good for overlay adjustment layers or overlay layers because you don't want it to be super noticeable what you did. You just want it to be a nice little finishing touch. So we'll do that. Then we'll add texture B. And texture B is a picture of a cork board. For this one, we'll go to overlay. So click where it says normal and choose overlay. And then we'll bring the opacity of this by eight. Eight percent is good for that. Good, accept those changes. Now we'll do our last one, file, place embedded, texture C. Here we go. Choose soft light for this one. We'll bring the opacity to maybe 15. Excellent, now this looks a little more rustic. It looks cool. 
And the last thing we're gonna do for this image is just add a little vignette around the image to make it look a little bit more old fashioned and a little more stylized. The way we're going to do this is to add a new blank layer first by going down here to new layer, this icon right here. Now we have a layer called layer one. Now with the brush tool selected right here, the brush tool, choose a size of about 5,000 and a hardness of 0%. Make sure you have black selected down here. If you don't, just double click here and make sure it's at black. Then we're just gonna paint around the edges. So I wanna bring the opacity of this brush down so I can click here where it says opacity 100. Bring that down between 10 and 20. And now we'll click around the edges here. And add a little vignette to the image. And because the opacity of the brush is at 14% right now, it's not gonna be a very strong vignette, right? But it's just adding a little darkness around the edges. And then what I can do is with this layer selected, go to normal and select soft light. And there we go. Now it just added a little bit of a nice touch to our image. And that's it. That's how you can create a composite within Photoshop. So I hope you're able to follow along, but again, don't worry if you weren't able to. This was just a little preview of what's to come. So if you need to go through again and pause and take a look at everything, um, don't worry about how long this takes you. You're not expected to know any of this at this point. We will cover it all again. I just wanna make you very aware of that. So now with this composition, we can go File, Export, Export As, choose JPEG up here, and then click Export All to choose where you want to save it on your computer. And that's how you can create Project Zero for the course. I'll see you in the next video.